You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Hello and welcome to Radio Nonsense, the official Comedy Club for Kids podcast that's suitable for all ages from. Two. Pew! And everything in between. I'm Tiernan, and this week I have been thinking a lot about just how boring car parks are. Yes, that is a boring subject, isn't it? I know. I know it is. It's so boring. I had to walk through a car park the other day, and it was the most boring thing in the world. Um, and I'm not even a car. Uh, no, actually, that makes sense, doesn't it? I suppose. If I was a car, I wouldn't have been able to walk through it. I'd have just had to park there. And if I was a car, then this whole podcast would just be this noise. And Comedy Club for Kids HQ would be full of fumes, so I'm quite pleased I'm not a car. It'd be really annoying anyway, being a car, wouldn't it? You've always got people sat in you, and and they always sort of demand where you have to go, and they're like dropping your crisps and spilling drinks everywhere and weeing themselves in the back seat. And you'd always have to drink petrol or electrics. Blah. Um, and, of course, you'd have car parks, which are boring. If I was a car, I'd be so annoyed at car parks. I mean, think about all the other kinds of parks there are. There's normal park parks, which I think are just called park parks, and parks don't have to park there. Well, then maybe they do. You, you never see parks driving off, do you? But anyway, whether they have to park there or not, they might have a playground and a cafe and a pond full of ducks who you aren't allowed to feed bread to anymore, so you have to feed them oats, which is silly because ducks can't make porridge. So what do they need oats for? And then you've got theme parks, which is where themes park. And in them, there are roller coasters and rides and fun games and food that is 99% sugar and the other 1% is a chemical that makes everything blue and is usually only found in space. And there's no ducks, but if there were, you could probably throw oats at them. And then you've got science parks, which is where science things happen. And they create potions to make monsters who can then go on slides and swings and feed ducks oats. And then there's skate parks, where skates definitely don't park. They keep moving so they can go up and down ramps and on swings and slides and feed ducks oats. And then there's deer parks, where deers go on swings and slides and feed ducks oats. Right? Those are all fun. They're all fun parks. And then there's car parks. What happens in a car park? Cars park in it. Boring. Where are the giant car-shaped slides and swings? Why can't you roll down your car window and throw oats at ducks while you shout at them the recipe for how to make porridge? Linda. Linda, what do you think about car parks, Linda? Oh, well, it was worth a try. I just can't stop thinking about how boring car parks are with their little white lines everywhere that aren't even laying out where you can play sports. Boring. Anyway, I know what I can do to take my mind off things. Mm-mm. This week, I get to announce the winners of the Beasts of Nobbly Bottom competition, uh, where you can win a bundle of both of Emily Jane Clark's very, very funny kids' books after she was on this podcast as a guest just a few weeks ago. And all you had to do was tell me about your own monster animal creation. So, the three winners are... Uh, Nina, who said a vegetarian vampire vixen, which is lovely alliteration. The vegetarian vampire vixen. I love it. And I don't know whether I'd be scared of that because it's a vegetarian vampire. So would that just mean um, it, it? I don't know. Does it just drink tomato juice? Um, it's very hard to know whether or not that would be worrying or not. Uh, and then there's Jack and Millie. Uh, and Jack said the snaken, a kraken with snake heads at the ends of tentacles, which is terrifying. And Millie said the mercat, who is a mermaid with a cat head, and they are a good monster. You can have one for a pet. I would like that. Thanks, Millie. But would I keep them in the bath or around the house? Like cats normally hate water. I can imagine it would constantly be really angry with itself having to go in the bath. Very confusing, but brilliant. Um, And Parker, who said, my idea for a monster animal is a Frankenstein's monster axolotl. And he sent in an absolutely amazing picture for that that I will put on our Instagram page. So thanks to all of you. Well done. And there'll be a copy of both books going out to Nina, um, Jack and Millie. Uh, you have to share. I'm sorry. That's what happens when you're siblings. And to Parker as well. And hopefully they will all be sent to the post ASAP. So that is all for competitions on Radio Nonsense for now, but hopefully we'll have some more on the show soon. And if you didn't win, Emily Jane Clark's Beasts of Nobbly Bottom books are available everywhere and they are very, very funny indeed. 
Right. Um, there might be no competitions uh, at the moment, but you can, of course, write into this podcast with any questions that you have that need answering or anything else that you want to let me know. And the way to do that is by asking your flatulent goons, sorry, I mean grown-ups, to help you email me at podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. If they'd also like to help this show happen, they can sign you up to the Linda edition of the podcast on Acast Plus, Patreon or Apple Podcasts, and you'll get an ad-free version of this show, a Linda-free version of this show, and it will all come out one day earlier than the podcast normally does too. And do check out our comedyclubforkids.co.uk website for all of our live shows and general pictures of otters and the colour yellow. Right, well that has totally made me forget about how boring car parks are. Oh no, I just remembered and they're so boring. Oh wait, I do have to do one other bit that will take my mind off it. <clears throat> now it's time for this week's most important as bit, but this week's question is from a listener called A.V. Now, I only found out how to pronounce uh, Avi's name properly after we recorded the interview. So I'm very sorry, Avi, for saying it wrong uh, throughout our chats with our guest. Uh, my name is Tiernan, so I regularly get called the wrong thing all the time, and I know how annoying it is. My name isn't Tim Ran or T-Man or Timothy. It's Tiernan. Anyway, Avi, I do hope you liked your answer, which is definitely better and more exciting than a car park. So here is the most importantest bit. I am very pleased to say that right here on Radio Nonsense is none other than Andrew Barnett Jones, aka Andrew Andrew, who doesn't believe in the colour blue, aka Anders Barjos the Third, official royal frog tamer, and as all of our secret agent listeners know you, shh, the camel jumps backwards at 4 pm on Sunday. But of course, Andrew, you are very well known for being the first person to put every single animal on Earth into alphabetical order based on surnames, for your incredible invention of the anti-deodorant for people who want to smell more pongy, and of course, most famously, for your popular campaign to have cinemas sell not only popcorn, but also heavy metal corn, country and western corn, and jazz corn as well. Um, Andrew, it's so nice to have you on the show. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, it, thank you very much for such a wonderful introduction. Uh, the, um, the, the anti, anti-perspirant, of course, uh, was, came out of my work with the animals. It started with the anteater and then it was the anti-eater and then it was the anti-perspirant eater. Uh, and once it's eaten the anti-perspirant, that arc stank. Wow. I didn't, I didn't realise that your, your, your work influenced other parts of your work. That's a really natural way of getting there. I'd, I'd never actually seen an anti-perspirant eater out in the wild. Where do they, where do they sort of get their food? Well, you, you don't see them because they're very ashamed. Right. Uh, what you, you can smell them. Uh, you may sometimes just be walking past an alleyway or an, an open sewer and you might just get a whiff and you go, yeah, they're antiperspirant eater. Are they related are they related to other whiffy animals? Is the skunk uh, sort of a, a distant relation or is is this? Well, there, there is, of course, the uh, animal with the world's smelliest feet, which is the giraffe. Yes. Uh, people don't realise that's why their necks are so very long. Yes, that's a, a classic it's evolution. Shame. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which I, I've met people, uh, and I won't name any names, I've met people who I thought over the years would have grown longer necks to, to avoid their own feet. Oh, I, I, I so desperately want you to name names. <laughs> now. <laughs> Smelly feet, Steve. Uh, we, all, look, we, all know, we all know a few, but I giraffes are the only like, ones... Lighthouse like Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Snakes as well. They start off spherical, little balls, like little rubber bouncy balls, but one end of them smelled and so they just gradually <laughs> stretched longer and longer that's why they've got no bones in the middle um wow. people don't realize that the jelly snake is entirely anatomically accurate that's incredible that's incredible and so they also taste of like uh, sort of strawberry and raspberry like jelly snakes do is that i've never actually eaten a snake so uh you have to get the right sort. sure sure um, I, I think if you can get a, a lime snake, they're the, they're the best ones. Right. Uh, green, obviously, nature's coding. Um, <laughs> if you see a red snake, uh, that's, that's strawberry. And if it's got a skull in it, then it's not a snake because we've established snakes have no bones. Yes, that's a, that's a very clever method, actually. That's a very clever... I, I, I didn't... You know, I mean, this it's is already so fascinating to have an expert like yourself on the show. I I didn't realise animals were colour coded in terms of flavour, but I think it makes quite a lot of sense. Now. There's lots of different coloured frogs, um, and obviously, I'm guessing the blue ones, bubblegum, red ones, probably cinnamon. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It, 
uh, are, are, are we allowed to say if you see a frog that looks a nice bright fruity <laughs> colour, give it give it a lick and see what it tastes like. <laughs> I mean, it's you know it, they 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 are very. It, it's why those frogs are very hard to spot because they don't want anyone doing that. Um, Absolutely, and it, it's worth saying that some of them have developed uh, various defence mechanisms yes, yes. to uh, to stop you licking them. So if you see a toad and you want to lick one, just remember the defence mechanisms. Some of them, for example, will bring out a photo album. Uh, full of picture after picture of their tadpoles yes. and they will tell you all about them and which ones have got allergies and which ones are doing well in school and you will be there for days yes. so it's best just to leave them be. really awful really awful there are also a selection of i know small amazonian frogs who will just call uh will just call your parents and tell you off there and then they'll just yeah. they'll just say, let them know this you know your child's trying to lick me uh it's it, it's awful and there'll be immediate consequences. Yeah, well, we, we all know the jingle. The jingle? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you lick a toad, <laughs> your parents' minds would be blowed. Wow. So put your tongue away. Today is not the day. Yes, of course. Of course. That was a classic. I think a lot of our listeners might be too young to remember, but that was a big advertising campaign. Uh, for quite some yeah, years, that was um, Elvis Presley, wasn't it? Yes, like? yes, that's exactly who sang it. Yes, it was. Just, it was the, what propelled him to fame, I think. Yeah, he, 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 he put a bit more vocal swagger in it, of course, but you know the the the, the words remain as true as ever. Yes, yes. Well, it was it was after there were many cover versions as well by uh, sort of people like Cindy Lauper and uh, in later years, I, I think Justin Bieber. Um, they've all done a version that. Red Hot Chili Peppers, mm. classic. Yes, yes, which is also confusing because they aren't, they aren't the flavour of Red Hot Chili Peppers, and yet they are the colour red. But they are the colour red, but they but didn't like get a jingle for telling people dancing on stage. Yeah, but there was there was I remember there were some years where they had to they had to say please don't eat me because we're not actually chili pepper, and if we were, it would also be too hot for you to eat anyway. So there's no reason. But people still tried, and uh, I think um, the lead singer definitely had his knee nibbled, didn't he? Yeah, that's why you have security barriers at gigs now. If you go there, you'll find they just don't let you eat the acts anymore. Yes, it's a real shame. It's a real shame how times change, I think. But I suppose, you know, we've got to move on as a society. You can't just eat pop stars. Um, You can't just eat sort of uh, the famous people that are named after foods. And and you can't go around uh, sort of licking frogs just because they're bubblegum flavour. That's... It's, it's, it's a sad <laughs> state of affairs, <laughs> isn't it? It is a sad state of affairs, but you know, it's uh, it, you know, but but we have we have you know, you are inventing new things. This is you know, times move on, new inventions happen. People can now be smelly because of your invention. And before it was, I'd say it was pretty frowned upon. People didn't really like other people being smelly. But now you've got the anti anti. How many antis is it? And. Well, it's it's any number. Right. Uh, it's, it, it depends on whether you have an old or an even number. Basically, right. it all sort of cancels out after a while. Uh, so there's there's the antiperspirant and then the anti antiperspirant, which could just also be called perspirant. Right, right, sure. Uh, so you you spray it on you, and it produces copious amounts of sweat. Wow! And what happens if it's used by your auntie? Is that then an anti an 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 anti anti perspirant? An anti anti perspirant. And then if it's yeah, used you, by... You have to be careful that the two doesn't, don't cancel <laughs> right, each other right, out. Right, right, okay. <laughs> right. No, no, Aunt Sylvia, don't touch the antiperspirant. <laughs> oh, not again. That's very dangerous. That's very dangerous. That wasn't your That wasn't your invention. And what, the art destroyer? Yes, the art destroyer. You didn't... I don't think you... Did you <laughs> no, but I did, build, I did once build an uncle trap. Right, right. <laughs> did it work? Uh, he's not got out yet. Wow, that's very good. That's very good. Does he keep because I still hear him scratching at night? <laughs> Does he keep having to sort of offer you little like sort of because uh, I like uncles are really good for often going around and giving you a, like a, a tenner, a ten pound note, or so you know trying to think of things that will take you to a I don't know a yeah. That, that's why I've got him trapped yes. under the floorboards. Hence the scratching. It's things he can slip between two floorboards. Ten pound notes are good. Uh, when they ran out, it was sort of sticks of chewing gum, sure. which was less good. Yeah. And then more recently, his fingernails, because he's been down there a while. Wow. And they're not as not as nice to chew. Of course, of course. Yeah, well, it's, but that's the like, fingernails. People do chew their. 
I, I was never, I, I don't know about you, I, I was never a fingernail person who, who would bite their fingernails. I went to school with lots of kids who I, did. I thought you were going to say you'd never chewed your own fingernails. Well, I haven't really. I mean, I, maybe I, I should. You chewed someone else's. Yeah, no, I haven't chewed anyone else. Well, this is what I was going to say, is people I know chew their own fingernails, but then you never, like, go out and, and people say, here's a little bowl of fingernails to start your, you know, you know, like how they give bread at a restaurant. It's a little something I made myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, a little bowl it's polite, fingernails. isn't it? It's home cooking in a way. <laughs> I mean, that's it. If a red snake can taste of strawberry. And, you know, uh, uh, they're forever growing. A florid man like me can taste of blancmange. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nibble them now. It would it would be horrible, but if people people obviously think fingernails are tasty, so you chew on them all the time. Yeah, that's a given. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't know. Do you think that everything we consume we think is tasty? Oh no, that's hard. If you think about any bits of your body that you may have. At one point or another, consumed from a certain degree. Yeah, of look, you're talking about bogies. We all know you're talking about bogies, and there are. I'm sure there. Are, Let's say bogies. You've said that like, we we can't we can't sort of jump around the bogies here. We just have to mention. But if you're pe- people, lemon and lime. Sure, <laughs> that's what I. If they are the color green, they must taste of green things. Potentially avocado, potentially um, uh, pea soup. My taste of beetroot. Does that mean I need to go to the you doctor? You absolutely need to go to the doctor. You are in a lot of trouble. Um, but it, unless you like beetroot, in which case maybe don't go to the doctor. Yes. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. Yes. Eating bogies, for instance. Exactly. Exactly. And when you've got like a really horrible cold and it's bright yellow, uh, banana. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a restaurant that someone could set up here and it would be very um, uh, cost effective because you're always growing fingernails. You've always got bogeys. And there's clearly people out there that eat those things. Um, Probably several of our listeners are having a munch on a bogey right now thinking, why isn't there a restaurant that caters for me? Well, I think the deeper question is, 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 might there already be one? And it just hasn't told you. Uh, have, have you ever been to a restaurant where the food comes out and you go, hmm, this is delicious, <laughs> but I can't quite place the texture? Oh, uh, no. It's just wondering. That's, just wondering. that's an awful thought, but it would explain there are some chefs that do very strange combinations of food. It would explain a lot, I think. Yeah, I I'm very I'm I. This is why I don't go out to eat at fancy restaurants. I think just to, the, 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 the risk is the too risk high. Is too high. <laughs> I don't know what that Michelin star is for. Well, Michelin, of course, is a tire company. Mm. So I, we don't. I can only assume that some tires are going into that food at some point. Because why else would there be a connection between yeah. the two? They like the food that's most rubbery tasting. And uh, yeah, most likely would work stuck to a car. That's that's what they give mm. stars for. Yeah, and food which, when you eat it, makes you look like a gigantic white wobbly <laughs> yes. man made out of tires. Yes. Yum yum yum, big portions. Yes. Now he was. I should. I, I don't know if the listeners will know about that. I, I don't know what that character was called. The Michelin tire person. He has a name. It's a really really weird name. Wow. Okay. It's, it's not like Michelle, because I'd have thought if they're Michelin tyres, he should be Michelle or um, Michelle the Tired. That would be a good no, name. I, 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 I'm almost tempted to leave a little gap in here and imagine that the editing gods of the future might drop the answer <laughs> in here. And then, and then after that's happened, we can be suitably amazed by the answer that comes in. Wow. So um, the... Uh, and just through the power of our own incredible memories, this has both come to us. And um, Andrew, the, the Michelin tire man's name is Bibendum. 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 That's Bibendum. it, yes. Yeah. Which is Latin for I'm made out of big wobbly tires. Is that right? Right. Because I yeah. I thought it was, um, I, I just assumed that he was named after a dramatic bit of music like Bibendum. You know, like <laughs> wherever he goes, people are a bit concerned. Bibendum. 
No, it's because he ate a lot, so he had a bib and he was at the end of it. So right. he was a bib end. Bib end, right, <laughs> right. It's... You see, Latin is easy when you try. That's how is that how Latin works, right? That's how all Latin yes. works. Yes, those Romans were actually not very sophisticated when it came down to yeah. it. They just <laughs> they were just making it. They were just looking at things. <laughs> So that's what Carpe DM. Uh, there's there's a fish uh, that's that's very sharp. Yes, yes, that's exactly that's exactly. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other. Uh, what's, what was very very was um that's um it's, it's very it's very tass. Well, things that are particularly yeah, yeah, exactly. tasseled. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> very tass. Excellent. Extremely tasseled. Yes, that's exactly it. Yes. <laughs> You see, it's easy, you know, Very easy. They, they make a big fuss about it. That's what, yes. But if they were so clever, why are they all dead? That's a very good question. That's a very good question, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I'm thinking about that. I actually don't, yeah. I mean, I don't think. No, I, I can't. I'm, I'm not accusing you. No, it's no, not, I, it's it not, wasn't it's not me. I didn't, I didn't kill the Romans. That's not me. Where were you <laughs> in zero? I, I wasn't. I wasn't there. I I can well. I can't prove it. Actually, that's very hard. That's very hard to prove. I wasn't at the fall of the Roman Empire. Ah. Um. You know who else wasn't at the fall of the Roman Empire? Y you. Queen Victoria. Oh, Queen Victoria. Right. Well. Do you know what this? So you must be Queen <laughs> Victoria. I, th I think. I'm, uh, I think that's how logic works. Well, Bibendum uh, wasn't at the end of the fall of the Roman Empire. So how do we know that a giant tire monster? Didn't eat the Roman Empire. We, we, don't. we don't. We don't. Those who do not know history are doomed to repeat well, it. That's it. And uh, possibly doomed to be eaten by a gigantic rubber tire man. It is. The, it is the problem with history. It is the problem. And and for all we the know, big rubber tire man coming to yeah. Leave. It's well, well, well. I was my my worry, my thing with that tire man is if you were made of tires, all you need to do is fall over once, and then you'll bounce away forever. And I don't know how he could live like that. I would be terrified every day. What if I tripped over something? And that's me. I'm either rolling or bouncing away forever. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a modern tragedy. It is, it is a big... Uh, I mean, the question is about how hollow he is. Could he get a puncture? Oh, no, that's would a very know? sad thought, isn't it? <laughs> would he know? Would he have to keep one hand over his knee for the rest of his life? Wow! What are you doing? I've got I've got a slow puncture in my left knee. <laughs> Prove it. Take your hand away. No, no, do it. He must be. Terrible. I regret nothing. <laughs> uh, his arch nemesis is a porcupine, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Well, and listen, Andrew. I mean, already I feel like we we have learned so, so much having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you again for coming on. Um, I, I've got a, I've got a question, sort of two questions actually that um, that I think you are the person that can answer them. Um, but before I ask you them, um, how do you feel about admin? How are you with admin? Admin. Yes, ad admin. Um, I'm I'm fine with admin. Yes, is that an, is that does, a, does it come? Up, does it have a little paper clip in the corner of the screen that's going to try and help you? Who's going to try and help you? I was going to say, is that a Latin? Is oh, that down all the kid friendly references? You'll see. Is that is that, um, is that a Latin? Is that children? There was a thing called the Michelin Man, and while I'm at it, there used to be a thing which sat in the corner of your screen, and there was a paper clip, and said, "It looks like you're trying to write a letter. Would you like to get it wrong by yourself, or would you like me to help you do it faster?" I also like the idea. They may not even know what a paper clip is. I don't know who who, who <laughs> clips paper to together anymore the people know i have paper everything's on a screen yeah screen clippers screen clippers but then that's annoying because you just clip your screen to someone else's screen and they'd be like give me back my screen while you walk off with someone else's tablet stuck to yours that'd be terrible we're 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 a very short distance here from being two old men shouting at clouds. It's, it's it's not it's not that short a distance. I, I think oh, in uh, my day, you had to clip paper together with small twisted pieces of metal. <laughs> These days, it's all screens, of course. I you know I I got locked out of my house the other day, and I had to unfold my tablet computer and use it to try and pick a lock with. It's not the same. <laughs> There's, I I am I am all for screens. I just don't want to clip uh, the screen to someone else's screen because I think they'd get upset. Yeah, that's well. I was going to ask if admin is a is is it not a German word? I was going to ask if admin is a Roman a Latin word because 
does it mean the minimum minimum amount of ads? Ad, ad, administration, they did a small amount of adverts. Yes, that's that's right. Well, there's going to be no adverts. There's just going to be two that, questions. That is the smallest possible yes, number that's of adverts. It, that's right, yes. Um, Unless we go into negative advertising, which uh, is where you have special jingles that try and put you off. <laughs> that's, that's, that's nadmin, technically. Right. So by this, it will taste disgusting. That sort of, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No one likes eggs. I mean, they do. I do. But, you know, that would be a... All our rivals' products are full of anthrax. <laughs> yeah, I like I like um, nad, Nadmin. Um, it's particularly, also, if somebody hates something enough, then I kind of want to see what it's like. So I think it might work the wrong way around for me. Um, well, listen, I've, I've got two admin questions for you, and I hope I hope that's all right. The, the, first, the first one is very simply, um, what is this? It's a big one, isn't it? Um, it's it, it's that's it's some kind of melon, I think. Right. But it looks like it's been underinflated. It's it's like a sort of sad, punctured football of a melon. Yeah, that's why I wasn't sure if I should eat it or not. No, no, probably not. I mean, there's the there's the watermelon, mm. uh, and then that's that's. I think what you've got there is more sort of a gravy melon, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, which is the soggy alternative. That does explain uh, the smell. Sa- yeah. Savory. It's good to have a balance of sweet and savory when you're going through your your daily uh, portion. You know, eat eat five um, portions of fruit a day, so you should be eating five melons a day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, once you've had your watermelon, if you've eaten a whole watermelon, it's quite hard to eat four more of those babies. Yes, so yes. Uh, you know, a gravy melon uh, helps sort it out, and then uh, a pickled onion melon to uh, add a bit of piquancy in there, that and, and two pea melons. Um, I think it's almost cheating, really, because you can right. just put pea melons in by the handful, can't you? Yes, yes, because th- yeah, th- there's there there needs to be more melon variety, I think, actually. That, well, because there's, there's honeydew melon as well, isn't there? Um, and then I suppose you offset that with some peanut melon, um, or they can go together. Peanuts, peanut melon is a tricky one. It could be savoury or sweet. Yeah, yeah pe- peanut melon and honeydew. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice combination. Hot sauce melon. So then, you, then you need the jelly melon. Jelly and melon. you've got the, the, the PBJ melon sandwich. <laughs> yes. Three of your five a day right there. It's very hard to eat as a sandwich. as They keep rolling off each other. Um, well, it, 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 you, it's popular amongst the sm- snake community because, yes. of course, they can dislocate their jaw and uh, swallow three melons between two pieces of bread. That's, that's the reason why their jaws like that well but the que- but the issue i suppose is if you if you are a jelly snake how do you eat a jelly melon is it cannibalism is it, yes well that's the what you don't you're like is the gingerbread man sits in the gingerbread house <laughs> and wonders am i made of house or is the house made of me oh my goodness that's a big that's a big question that is a big question i think you've got problems yeah yeah, well, again, the gin, you know the gingerbread man. You know we're talking about the 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 Michelin b- 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 could get one puncture. The gingerbread man just trips over. That's his leg snapped, and then someone will eat it. Yeah, and it won't. Who's going to eat it? He's right there. Yeah, and it's so tasty. And if he can't crawl away to find other food, it's a dilemma. Yeah, and and your only protection is a house that people could also eat, and <laughs> like you, you really. <laughs> Possibly made of your relatives. Yeah. We just don't know. I think this is why you don't see them in the world anymore. I think they've... No, uh, no. It's, wow. Natural selection. Too tasty to live. Yes, yes. It is. Well, that's their fault. You know, that's their, they should have... don't see so many jelly steaks in the world anymore. Yeah, they, they need to develop these frog-like defence mechanisms and, and uh, they'd all be fine, but sadly not. Yeah, Com- complaining about their uh, holidays being disappointing. That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, well, I, I, I've uh, thank you for identifying the gravy melon. Uh, I'm going to have it with some um, chip melon, uh, probably, and a pie melon. I think that's probably going to have to be the way forward. Um, I'm slightly concerned that it was posted through the letterbox as well. It, it really doesn't look in good shape. But uh, that that was probably why it was so hard to um to identify. You've got the you've got this, the sad feeling which is related to having too many soggy melons. Yes, yes, yes. So the well known melancholy. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, that's that's exactly uh, that's exactly why it's called that. 
Um, well, thank you. Thank you for helping me uh, d- deal with these issues. Um, the the second question, this one is, I'd say this is harder. So I hope you, you know, please do think about it. Please do listen to it. If you need time, you can have time to to, to deal with this. Um, okay, let me just get my, get my brain polishing clock now. Please do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Brain feeling polish. Yeah. Do, you, do you use it before the question or, or after the, after you've heard it? When does it? It depends how hard the question is. Okay, well, I'll wait and see. Um, Andrew, would you rather accidentally make rice pudding appear at the least convenient moments or have a stretchy, elastic chin? I thought you said this was a hard one. It's the stretchy, elastic chin for the win every time. Are you sure? I, it has an infinite number of uses. I, I'm immediately envisaging plucking it as some kind of percussion instrument. <laughs> Particularly I, I, I do like stroking my chin when I'm thinking. So I just have the ability to then go, look how much I'm thinking, and then go, boom, 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 boom. But, well, you see, you say that as though it's a positive. Would you be able to get anything else done? Because... You, you stroking your chin would take well, so long. Why would I long. want to get anything? <laughs> and and then playing it as an instrument would take so long. But yeah. You wouldn't... So I've, I've got I've got you know my career will be I will be a, a concert mm, chinist. That's true. Uh, and you know maybe a little chamber quartet. Find someone with a, an elongating nose and a couple of people with trick elbows, and uh, we can make beautiful music together. Yes, that's nice. That is nice, actually. That sounds lovely. I, yeah. I sort of had a fear that you'd get it caught indoors or get, you know, get it wrapped around a pole or something. Then you can't, like if you're on the on the, on a train. Well, I'm not, I'm I'm envisaging it having no no feeling in it particularly. I mean, if if that is the case, then that does change things rather. But I'm I'm sort of thinking if you stretch a long time, if you can whirl it around like a lasso and use it to. You know, climb up tall buildings, break into banks, the, the usual. Yes. And yes. that that would be cool as well. You could be a superhero, uh, Chin Man. <laughs> you'd be super villain. I think if you're breaking into banks, you're a super villain. I don't want to ruin things for you there. But I don't. Oh, think... it's, a, it's, it's all. It's a matter of. Business, <laughs> right, sure, sure, yeah. Right. But I... uh, topologically speaking, if you just invert the notion of inside and outside. Um, I, which you can do with the sphere. Um, I, I, I know maths. Um, you simply redefine what the inside of the bank is, and you're breaking out of the bank. Right. Uh, oh, uh, I see. I see. Uh, okay. Where I shouldn't have been. Oh. Into the inside of the bank, where all the money happens to be. Now, obviously, all of this money shouldn't be here outside of the bank. I better take it with me right. back inside the bank. I see. I see. Perform an inversion with respect to the bank. Wow. Wow. I mean, I still, I think the fact you've thought it through that much is more supervillain than super. I think that that still sounds to me more like a supervillain plan. I, I like the fact you thought I thought that through. <laughs> it sounds like the sort of thing took the words to you would have said as a big mouth. speech just before you were defeated. <laughs> That's the... <laughs> We are more alike than you think. Yes, yes, you see. Apart from the infinitely extendable chin, that's very much just me. Yeah, which would, but it would be quite intimidating. A lot of uh, classic superheroes have quite big chins, so they'd be very intimidated mm. by a supervillain who had an infinite Well, exactly. The classic supervillain is the mirror image of the hero. Mm. So, wobbly chin dude. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's a villain, he's a dude, obviously. <laughs> Um, only, only uh, if there's a superhero, he was Chin Man. If he's a villain, he's Chin Dude. Chin dude. Yeah. Uh, that's just how, it, how how we roll, man. Uh, so obviously, he would be the arch nemesis of someone who had a very very firm, very strong, chiselled jaw. Would you Would you go for a mask that covered everything except the chin, or would you Or would you go for a sort of ancient Egyptian Tutankhamun like long chinned look? Oh, I like that, like a, like a chin piece. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like the sound of that. If it was, if it was gonna now, if I if I, if I am embracing my destiny and turning to the dark side of the chin, uh, then I think I definitely want to have the chin free mm. for some pendulous chin swinging action. Yes, yes. Uh, now nah, you think you can get me square jawed, girl? Uh, 
uh, hashtag not all superheroes. Uh, I will <laughs> defeat you with my swinging chin, my chin, chinny, chinny chin swing swing. I need to work on the name. Yeah, it's uh, you'd be hard to defeat. I don't know what your mate. Yeah, is that how you defeat someone with a very square, maybe a, a, a very uncomfortable scarf, a balaclava, perhaps uh, something that retains the chin to the face. Hmm. I, I like the idea of a very uncomfortable scarf because yes. that would be quite an achievement amongst the scarf. Community. Yeah, it'd be really, it be really, it's so, so itchy. Made of blades. Very. <laughs> I thought just really oh, scratchy. Right. Okay, now yeah. I went blades, you went, no, the material yes. itself is made from a 100% cotton rich <laughs> wool <right>. fiber. <laughs> so when your chin swung it, it would, it, you it would itch against it. It would itch and scratch, and you'd be like, this is unbearable. I don't oh, want to wear this. That's a super villain. Yeah. Itchy neck man. <laughs> uh, it would be, it, they'd be so irritating. They'd be very hard to defeat someone that made you annoyingly itchy. Just an annoying wool man would be very oh. irritating. Yeah. Machi Machino wool annoying man. La Lama. Get away from me, dry clean only. <laughs> Lama dude, yeah. It'd be yeah, I I well I I like how quickly you chose that. I think um <clears throat> you didn't even you didn't even I, I've I've somewhat dismissed the the, rice uh, the, the porridge yeah and the rice pudding bigger problem yeah well that was it. you didn't uh, even know I, what I, it was, I dismissed yeah. it so much they, they those are the same substance is that right uh, rice rice pudding and porridge right. it's just the same and wallpaper paste those three things just just different so just clever, yeah clever advertising to make you seem like you've mm. got three because often people do have those three things together and they. I haven't realized the thing which put me off was, was uh, that one was the phrase the least convenient moment um because you know the chin the the the, the yeah. elongating chin was just an out and out you have it the time, yeah. whereas whereas anything followed by the phrase at the least convenient yes. moment yeah. just kind of feels a little bit like uh oh i don't know I've, I've seen that sort of thing go wrong before. <laughs> yes that is true that is true it would you yeah. have the biggest birthday cake in the world at the least convenient moment. <laughs> yes, that's true. As I am balancing on a tightrope across the um, the great gorges of America, here's your cake. Ah! <laughs> that is that is true. That is true. And uh, yeah, you're right. It would it would happen incredibly. Yeah, there's it would be. It, I think there would be an awful lot of rice puddings in toilets. Unfortunately, I think that would be probably the most basic level, all the way to in someone's face at like a big UN meeting. Although that could be quite funny. I mean, there, there's probably comedy value. But, but if, it, if it was funny, it wouldn't it be wouldn't the be least convenient, convenient moment. Yeah, yeah. It's the, 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 the devil is in the detail. I think just I'm imagining sort of the end of the movie. The Guy and the girl are finally facing each other. Sparks are flying, and then rice. <laughs> yes, yeah. Everywhere. It'd be moments like, well, I'm luckily I can't be defeated except by Toby Maguire dangling upside down, yeah. Kirsten Dunst going upwards, <laughs> rice pudding <laughs> flying out of Spider Man's eyes. <laughs> why, why out of his? Just everywhere. Why are you crying? I'm not. <sighs> It's just rice pudding. It would be the most horribly uncomfortable. To have rice pudding out of your eyes, I think, would be up there with a awful scarf. That is, That would be the most uncomfortable thing. Rice pudding eyes and uncomfortable scarf, man. It's the yes. comic book series no one is asking for. But you, but you do bring up the, 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 the good point. I think Spider-Man, as a hero, if he could shoot rice pudding instead of web, that would have made for a wonderfully different tale. That's, yeah. Oh, he was going to, but it just didn't scan in the song. Yes. Yeah. Just... Spider Man, Spider Man does whatever a spider can. Shoots a web any size, fires rice pudding endlessly <laughs> out of his eyes. <laughs> Hang on, that doesn't really scan. Yes. Yeah. That's a, it. It's a shame, though. It's a shame. I think, uh, and uh, you know, and the rice pudding companies were very pleased with that. Um, maybe, maybe that's why it didn't didn't work. Yeah, I, I think it turned out to be an early form of advertising. Mm. Uh, rice pudding sales. Just I think went so. Up well, and then there was that. also the problem where people realised Spider Man wore red and blue, so it was probably sort of strawberry and bubblegum flavour, and then he got eaten, and um, that was uh, that was a pretty awful last episode. Uh, yeah, by the lime goblin. By the lime goblin. Yes, <laughs> it was a very tasty show. Rice pudding, lime goblins. 
Wow. Tasty spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wow. Well, let, let, Andrew, I'm I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed with how uh, how quickly you answered that question, but also how much thought you put into it. I think you know. I think a stretchy elastic chin is clearly clearly the way forward. Um, you're absolutely right. Uh, well, well, look, we've 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 hit the main question. I say main question. It's sort of two questions. Um, we've had this question, and it's been sent in by, I think, uh, Ave. I might or Ave. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. A A V E. Uh, I think it's short for Avenue. Avenue, right? That's it, Avenue. So we've been sent this question by Avenue. Do you think? We, do you think an entire Avenue has sent this question as a collaborative question, or? I, I think so. I think they probably contributed one word at a time. Right. That's nice. That's very, very hard. And they to just do. they just passed the piece of paper down the street and go and write a word on this. It might. Do you know what? It makes this question make a lot more sense if that was, if that was how they did it. Yeah. Um I right, well thank you this entire avenue. Um I don't know where you are in the world, but thank you for sending us in. They they say I'm ten laughing snakes old. Um I don't know if you how you're how you are with your age charts, but I work that out to be around fifty four, I think. In in snake years. Yes. Yeah. They don't say if it's jelly snakes or but you know. Well, laughing snakes. There's a, I think there's a, there's a big connection between laughing and jelly. Yes, wobbling. Yes, it's the same amount of wobbling. Yeah. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yes. Well, so probably about fifty four then. So an entire avenue. Maybe that's their collective ages once they've divided, they've added everyone's age together and divided it by the amount of people, or, or perhaps they're all just exactly the same age. It's it's very hard to tell uh, w with this lack of detail. Um, but yeah, I think what people should do in streets is you should only live in the house that is the same number <laughs> as your age. Well, it would make this sort of thing much easier to work out. <laughs> what happens on your birthday? Do you have to get out of your house? You move house, everyone moves oh, sure. up. Yeah, that's quite stressful. I mean, you, you, you have to share the house with everyone in the street who is that age. Right. Yeah, it's quite... You want to move into number 18, it's a party house. But then number sort of 104, it's quite sedate. Hey, I live at 98, it's a it's... terrible <laughs> smell of talcum powder. <laughs> Well, also number four is probably just a. If there's no grown-ups there, it's just going to be a lot nope. of really horrible, smelly sort of nappies and. They grow up so fast. Yeah, yeah. Number two, I should say. I, I a big insult to four-year-olds saying you're still in nappies there. Um, but it, the number two, pretty grim. Um, it's. I, I was. I'm sorry. I am just laughing because you said the face number two. Number two. <laughs> yeah, number two. Which Obviously, one? I shouldn't be living at ninety-eight. I should be living at eleven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the but the fact that number two would also be filled with poo simply on the basis of uh, and that's beautiful. That's beautiful how that how that came together. Um, I yeah. I I'm, I just feel the stress of the stress of moving house is quite a lot. And the fact that it'd be happy birthday, get out, <laughs> and you'd have to then do some. There's something very horrible. Uh, about do, 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 do it to the tune, you know. <laughs> happy birthday, get out. <laughs> happy birthday, get out. Happy birthday, start packing. Now release the house. That, that makes it better. And then a birthday cake arrives at the least convenient moment. Just Always, to, yeah. and it's made of rice pudding. Yeah, that would be terrible. What a terrible, what a terrible. Well, look. You know, hopefully for this avenue, they are uh, of different. Well, I hope that isn't the situation on this avenue. That's why I'm, I'm. They've got it together. They've sent these two questions. Um, the first one is sort of, sort of a question. So, would you like both questions all at once? Would you like them in reverse order? Would you like? Can I have one of the questions all at once? You can have one of them, and questions. then the other one later. Yes, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You can perfectly have that. Um, question one then uh, is. Do you, I'm like, eating bed frames for breakfast? That's a good mm. question. Mm. Uh, because everyone knows about breakfast in bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a grand tradition of our time. And this is just, I think, suggesting, as far as I can tell, taking it one step forward and having beds for breakfast. Yes. Yeah, which there are there are hotels up there which are bed and breakfast. Uh, <laughs> this is your 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 bed is your breakfast. Yes, yeah, and it, and it obviously you can makes make sense. a sandwich. You can make a bed. Add it up, people. Well, I think it makes sense having them for breakfast because if you had them for dinner, then you'd have nothing to sleep in at night time. Exactly, because you'd have eaten your bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I think the question is what sort of food would make the most comfortable uh, bed for the night? And then you wake up in the morning and you consume the bed and then you are ready for the day. Yeah. I'm imagining a sort of taco. <laughs> right, that's that's nice. You're sort of folded into it at night. And yeah, then you have exactly. to eat your way out. Yes. Yeah, or it could be a bunk bed. And then you've got, you know, savoury below, sweet up above. That's nice. Well, then you could have like wafer biscuits would be quite good for that. You know, and you get those oh, like yeah. stacked wafer biscuits. That would be... Um... That would be decent. I mean, we mentioned yeah. gingerbread houses earlier. I don't see why a ginger a gingerbed a gingerbed gingerbed. Yeah, Ooh, I like it. Brand name. Mm, that's it, gingerbread. Please mark that. Yeah, gingerbread. <laughs> yeah, that that could that could be quite nice. the The issue I I suppose I have is that you, when people, uh, you know, people sleep, they sort of they they move around a lot. People look quite a lot of people fart in their sleep, um, and then you'd have to wake up and you'd have to eat the gingerbread that you farted on. Yes, yeah, but if you yourself are a gingerbread man at this point, oh, yes, yeah. then isn't your fart a delicious cloud of um, <laughs> bum, sweet ginger? Bum ginger, yes, yeah, yeah, uh, but, but very possibly that's true. Have you have you never smelt a gingerbread man's fart? I do you know I have I have not I don't know. Next time you get a gingerbread man, pull its finger off. <laughs> But that's and the sad smell. thing is it doesn't you don't put it through, like as you said it pulls its finger off and then then they're often but sometimes they do fart out of sort of upset don't they a sort of scare yeah. pull my finger yeah. Ow! Ah! yeah not that hard you <laughs> root <rinse! laughs> yes yes that is true yeah well I will I will have to smell I never thought of that I just sort of ate them which is quite cruel same with jelly babies um I guess they do jelly jelly farts. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Little squeaky ones. Yeah, but but we're talking like squeaky wobblers. Who, who in their time has not done a squeaky wobbler? <laughs> Often, as the phrase goes, at the least convenient moment. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's... Oh, Vicar, how very pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, you know, back to the Michelin Man. Surely every fart that Bibendum <laughs> does is a. If you're a tire and you have to release rubbery. Air, yeah, there's a there's a that's an awful sound. Um rubbery with a certain asphalt texture to it. <laughs> it smells air like, you can chew. Like sort of burning rubber. Uh, that's uh, awful. Yeah, and that's how he started. He had a book. <laughs> <laughs> oh mm, five stars. <laughs> And it was just originally a list of places where he'd farted yes. on his motor travels around Europe and he'd given himself star ratings. And then his wife found it and he was just, just embarrassed, mm. as, as I think is understandable. Yes. And he just lied his lied his rubber head off wow. and said, this is a guidebook to the best restaurants in Europe. Wow. wow. But I guess that must have been awkward when he had to then take her to the restaurants that were just places he'd farted. Many of which he'd been barred for. Yes. Wow. Wow. It's a high, he's, I feel the more we talk about him, the more I feel quite sorry for him and his, his life. You know, he's had a hard time. He's, but he can smile through it. He's got little choice. He's got rubbers for tires. Yes, that's true. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, if he, if he, I'm guessing he would eat a, 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 a rubber t tired bed. Like, would, because we just, you know, if gingerbread, people are on ginger bed ginger beds but you you were saying you you'd ideally go for a taco um mm -hmm. you know i think it's I, I, what you, what it's you, my saying. intention i worked it all out i have a plan of a taco <laughs> would you would you have the but would you have a plain taco you wouldn't go for the full refried beans guacamole <laughs> sour cream when i climbed into it in the evening it would be a plain taco <laughs> When I got out of it in the morning, it would be refried beans. That's, see, that's that's horrible. And then there's no way... That's, that's how they make refried is that, beans. Is that it? That oh, come on. Lot, the, yeah. the clue is there in the yes, name. You're right, you're right. They don't disguise it. It, it is quite clearly. <laughs> what have you done to these beans? You've refried them, yeah, have you? What, what happened in the meantime? Why wasn't frying them enough? Did they go cold? 
And then I, I, I'm not going to... Are you going to throw away these cold beans? No! I'm going to refry them. Really? <laughs> really? That's the best thing you can do with these beans. Yeah, waste not, want not. Mm. I, I, I can't believe it was there in plain sight all this time. That's that's horrifying. It's really... Isn't it? Isn't it? It is. Wait till you hear about Toad in the Hole. <laughs> yeah, it does mean they could get served alongside some nails or bogeys and, and kind of fit in with the category. Well, if we fry beans, we boil eggs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no. And then there's uh, cornflakes that have gone soggy in the milk and then we put through a mangle and hung out to dry. Yes, that's those are the... Re reflaked corn. Re reflaked corn. Oh, that's that sounds lovely and appealing, doesn't it? It's like what you get when you take your socks off on a hot day. That's uh, that's really uh, that's really awful. That is really awful. Yeah, that is. I mean, the, the thing is, is all all your we're building up to is you know, if you eat bed frames for breakfast, whatever you are, you've you've slept in that bed, and then you yeah, you've, eat you've it. made your own bed. You've made your own bed. Now, now you've got to eat it. Yeah, yeah. And also, you are what you eat. Yes. Yes, and and a QED, and it's a bed for breakfast. Mm. Uh, then move on to a sideboard for lunch, and uh, some some sort of um, cocktail of chairs come come the evening. Sounds, yeah, that sounds nice. That sounds very sophisticated. Uh, yes, yes. I I'm trying to think what a what chair would go nicely, but um, a little chaise long. Something like that. The dining chair, yes. obviously. Oh, yes, of course. Hiding in plain sight. Of course. Yes, very Why good. is it called a dining chair? What's so very special about Does it? Because you have to tuck in. You yeah. can eat it. And the dining table. Yes. And the whole dining yeah. room. Oh, yeah, if you're, if you're, if really, you're really angry. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> wow. If you've done your exercises <laughs> a day, you've got those extra calories to burn, eat a dining wow. room. Wow. Well, I, I, this is this whole. And run, run in terror from the living room. <laughs> oh, no. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a very scary thought. I'd never thought of the living room as like a, a monster, but it, it, it explains why you can sometimes get stuck in the sofa. Sofas often look like they eat people. Yeah. 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 They're a lot bigger than you think. Uh, they, they, they. That's what I call so far, right? Um, right. Because it's a perspective thing. They get closer and closer, and you realise exactly how big they are, and then the cushions consume you. That's wow, wow, wow. Unless, unless you call them a a, 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 couch, a couch, a coach, and then they drive. Now, have you ever heard of a couch potato? Yes, yes, yes. That is a person who sits on a couch for so long that the couch goes yum yum. They're just like a potato. Oh. And that's the reverse of you eating a bed frame. That's like the furniture getting yeah. its own back. It's the circle <laughs> of life. Wow. Well, we eat the furniture. The furniture eats us. If you eat the bed, it is only fair for the bed to also have a chance to eat you. If you... I, I'm sure I saw a diagram in biology once. You're right. It's what happens when you're tucked in too tight. That's absolutely the, the yeah. of it. Yeah. It starts to digest. Well, I, I mean, this is this is a big question. I, I um, yeah, it's a big question. I, I, I feel like I, I, I mean, I think probably the answer for for a avenue then, uh, is yes, you do. Yes, you do. Like eating. Yes, That's good. It's um, yes, you you eat them and they may also eat mm. you. Wow. Well, uh, in, impressive. Very impressive. Ouroboros, the snake biting its own tail. Is that an, the bed eating its own pillow? Is that a is that an advert or is that an advert? I can't work out if you've sold that to me or. <laughs> I well, it depends who I'm selling it to. Maybe I'm selling it to furniture. It's very well, very deep. Um... If your bed is listening, <laughs> look at the tasty young child. <laughs> It's, uh, for the listeners who are listening to this, well, uh, yeah, well, just before bed, um, play, play. This is more of a morning podcast. This is what I was going to say. Have your have your podcast for breakfast. That is the yeah the before podcast, the podcast has you for breakfast. You'll be you'll be fine. Um, well, listen, there is there is a second question. I feel like I've got you know we've got to check. Um, and and Avenue has asked, uh, why are bananas slippery? 
tragedy, isn't it? And and it's very important here that we we check whether by slippery mm. we mean that they slide around a lot, mm-hmm. or whether we mean we mean that they are like or resemble slippers. Yes, because because both of those things are slippery. Uh, yes. And I, I think the, the real truth here is if you put bananas on your feet mm. as mm. slippers, mm. you will discover why they are called slippers, because they are indeed slippery. Right. In right. both sets of the Would Would you just put the pe- – it's quite hard to put the, your foot in when you've before you've peeled them. Are you talking just put the banana peel on your foot? What kind of a monster do you think I <laughs> Of course, you of course you peel. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, and if the kind of monster you think I am is a Bigfoot, then you peel five of them right. and pop one of them on each gigantic deformed toe. Yes, which is why Bigfoot's very hard to track down, isn't it? Because no one can find yeah, their traps. They just slide everywhere. And then, and there's just these yeah. long sliding trails. Yeah, avalanches have a natural cause. Everything has a simple explanation if you look hard on enough and yes. hard enough. And in yeah. this case, it's because he's. Sliding uncontrollably down a mountain with ten bananas on his feet, <laughs> ah, just constantly wailing. It's um... yeah, that's why it's also known as the Sasquatch. Uh, it's because it's the noise that's made by ten bananas hitting a, <laughs> a rock at the bottom of a mountain. Yes, it's a squat. <laughs> yes. yeah. It's an unfortunate existence, actually. But, and then he climbs back up to mountain, and puts new bananas on his feet. Happens all over again. Yeah. But, um... It's tragic. It's tragic. It's very sad. Uh, what people don't understand, of course, is that you know they don't call him big, mm. uh, which means that the rest of him isn't. Because uh, if if all of him was on the same scale as his feet, he'd just be called big. Yes. But he's big foot, so he's an enormous feet and a tiny little body. Right. Right. Little matchstick legs going down to big feet. Which is, uh, it's going to be hard for him to buy shoes. Uh, you know, it's probably quite embarrassing. And he's like, can I have a yeah. size 400, please? And, <laughs> and then they sort of look and laugh. And that's why, I guess that's why he's opted for bananas. Um, what, would you, I mean, do, would you, so bananas are slippery, but they're also slippery. I would say, no, that's that is, is interestingly not the question. And the question was not, are bananas slippery? Why? Uh, the question is why? Yes, yes. You know what is the motive? <laughs> right, right. And is it if you put the banana in the chair and you play good cop bad cop with it <laughs> right. and you grill that banana? Don't grill a banana; it tastes disgusting. Right. Uh, if you interrogate that banana, if you uh, put a spotlight on it and wait for it to turn brown, uh, you can get the truth out of it if you try. Why? Why are you so slippery? Well, let me tell you a story about the time that I was a jewel thief in Cairo. No, don't avoid the question, Banana. Yeah. Ah, yes, no, you're right. I should do that. It is nonsense, nonsense. I am a window cleaner. I work in Newcastle and I only ever work in extremely high rise flats. No, you're avoiding the question. Uh, never slap a banana around the face. No. It does neither you nor the banana any good at all. No. Uh, they, they are so slippery, it's very hard to get a straight answer right. out of them. It's very hard to get a straight anything out of a banana. They are legendarily curvy. Yes. But, but, but you, it sounds like you've done, because I mean, <clears throat> when you slap them enough, they become baby food. And then, mm-hmm. ad- admittedly, easier to interrogate in some ways, but they won't make a lot of sense. Um, when they're quite mushy, what what is the what what answers have you have you garnered from a banana? Oh, uh, poor parenting. Right. Oh, that's. Um, what I, I think it's it's always possible to blame the parents. Uh, as we know, the parents of a banana are canaries and snakes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And and if you've got a canary for a father and a snake for a mother, you know it's you're gonna you're gonna be slippery. Mm. Now, like a snake, you see, you've got that curved shape, and also the ability to shed your skin. Yes. Uh, in the case of a snake revealing another snake, like a very very rubbish magic trick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what is inside this snake? You'll never guess. It's, it's another, another snake. snake. Yes. Uh, in the case of a banana, mmm, delicious, tasty stuff. 
Yes. Uh, and from the canary, you get the yellowness and the beautiful singing voice. Yes, of course. People realise this about the banana. Of course. Yes, of course. The uh, the and, and a, natural alto of the fruit world. And and also much like snakes, uh, green bananas taste like lime. Yellow bananas mm-hmm. taste like bananas. Bananas. Yeah, mm. red bananas. Brown so, bananas. Yeah. Don't eat. Don't eat brown no, it's bananas. Only, it's only only <laughs> Yeah. There's any number of reasons, but now you know the real one. We just can't say yes. it. Yes, yes, we can't talk about poo on this. Simply podcast. use the code phrase. Yes, or they, they live at number two. That's um, <laughs> that is that is it. If your banana is two years old, don't eat don't, it. Don't eat that. Definitely, that's that's. It will certainly be brown if it is two years old. That's the advert right there. That's the that's yeah. the one that they used mm, to. Bananas, <laughs> don't eat them. <laughs> Wow, wow, well, thank you, thank you, Andrew. That is the expertise that we needed on this show. I hope, I hope everyone on the avenue is pleased with that answer. And if any individuals on the avenue are not pleased, I will get them to send in individual complaints. But I think overall, as a as an avenue, they're probably very happy. Well, then anyone who's not pleased, we'll, we'll just ask them to move into number one. Yes, very good. And then they can just just have the babies scream at them <laughs> nonstop until they mend their ways. It's a very cruel, cruel plan, but I, I like it. I like it. Well, listen, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for your expertise. Thank you for uh, answering the avenues, uh, Arve's questions. Um, what, are, what are you up to in the next sort of uh, decade, century? you got much going on? Um, I'm going to evolve. Mm. Uh, I've, I've been thinking about it. It's, it's been about time, let's face it. We've, uh, we had uh, apes hominids, humans, and then we just kind of let the ball slip a little bit. So I think next stage of human evolution. Yeah. What are you going for? I haven't, I haven't worked it out beyond that. I mean, you know. Stretchy chin? Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. And stretchy chin is an option. We discussed it earlier. Stretchy chin, stretchy chin, Super stretchy long, face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great big white tubular rubber man face. Yeah, there you go. And then I'm going to go all around the world rating my farts. Wow. Wow. Well, look... Next stage of human evolution. <laughs> good, good, good luck to you, and, and and I hope to get you back on the show as as a as a huge tire person at some point in the future. Some may say it won't be that long. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Because parking sucks. Looking for a space, driving round and round. Thanks so much to Andrew Barnett Jones for having time in between inventing his anti deodorant to talk to me and answer AV's question. AV, I do hope you liked your answer, but if not, why not write any complaints you have inside a banana skin and it's very likely a Bigfoot will use it as a toe shoe and I'll never have to see it. When Andrew isn't talking about bananas, um, he writes for so, so many cartoons that you have probably watched already, so do look out for his name on the credits next time you watch Mr Bean, Lloyd of the Flies, Boy Girl, Dog, Cat, Mouse, Cheese, or so, so, so many more. Um, And if you have a question that you need to have answered, then please do get your flatulent goons, sorry, I mean grown-ups, to help you email me at podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. And if those grown-ups want to help make this show happen too, they can sign you up to the Linda edition, which is advert-free, very Linda-free. It's very even more Linda-free than this uh, edition, and it comes out one day early too. And they can do that on Acast Plus, the Comedy Club for Kids Patreon page, or Apple Podcasts. And go and have a look at comedyclubforkids.co.uk too, because there's stuff on there, like videos and where all our live shows are, and other things well um i think after all that i've very nearly completely forgotten just how boring car parks are phew uh hello oh it's the comedy club for squids what have i done to annoy you now i haven't even been near water this week you've got information okay consider me listening car parks are actually carp arcs and if you look closely there are lots and lots of carp fish that hide in them for safety is that right (coughs) oh they need to be boring otherwise all of us would see the fish and they wouldn't be safe anymore and they'd have to flee somewhere else wow thanks for that comedy club for squids well i see Right, well, car parks are actually carp arcs. Very clever, very clever. Wow, that changes my whole mind. They are not boring at all. But hang on, wait. Does that mean deer parks are actually de-ruparks? 
What does it mean? What does what hides there? What are these? Oh, that's going to bother me forever, and I'll never stop thinking about it. I almost wish I was a car. Bye. You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. It's the end.